Ang ito ay rated SPG, striktong patnubay at gabay ng magulang ang kailangan. Maaaring may masiselang tema, lengguahe, karahasan, sexual, horror o droga na hindi angkop sa mga bata. Okay, alright. So, hello dears. Ayan. So, welcome again to now to the part 2 of our video on seminal fluid analysis or semen analysis. Okay, so for this part, we'll now start with the bulk yud of semen analysis. And we'll start first with macroscopic examination or we examine the physical appearance of your semen. Alright, so medyo nagkabuang akong projector, pero yeah, please follow lang. Okay, alright. So we'll start first with appearance. Ayan, so as you can see, muni siya ang white sperm versus clear sperm or semen na ganyan pasabot. Okay, but for the appearance, the normal color is about gray to white color and yung odor is musty. Okay, and translucent. Um, so usually na yung mo describe as pearly white. Okay, pearly white, pearly white. Ayan, pearly. Okay, pearly white. Alright, and uh, translucent siya. And yung odor is musty. Or some will describe it as Clorox. Alright, or uh, Zonrox ba na odor. Okay, alright. Ayan, so alam nyo na yan. <laughs> okay, very common na odor, di ba? Okay, alright. So again, uh, musty odor or Clorox, Zonrox daw na odor. Okay, alright. So muna siyang yung normal appearance. Okay, now... Uh, for clear appearance, uh, it usually indicates that the sperm concentration is low because again, uh, gamay ra imuhang you know concentration, gamay ra imuhang spermatozoa na ah, so it has uh, a clear appearance, okay. And if uh, na ay white turbidity, that could indicate na increase po imuhang leukocytes, all right. And we have to differentiate leukocytes from spermatids or your immature sperm cells, okay. And usually, if tasan leukocytes, then that could indicate uh, infection, okay. All right, maybe in the reproductive tract of the male patient, okay? All right, next we have also red coloration, if na mga red, then that could indicate the presence of erythrocytes or red blood cells. So maybe na bleeding sa, sa prostate ba, sa ejaculatory duct or whatever, okay? So that could indicate uh, bleeding, presence of erythrocytes. And if na yellow, next, yellow coloration, this could indicate urine contamination, okay? or prolonged abstinence and some medications. Now, urine is toxic to sperm cells, okay? So, pwede siya maka-affect uh, sa motility sa sperm and even sa iyang viability po. Alright? So, it's important na dili siya makontaminate og, uh, og urine. But if na ay yellow coloration, then that could indicate uh, na contaminate or na ay urine contamination. Okay? Alright. And some medications and prolonged abstinence. So, more than seven days na ang pag-abstain. Okay? Alright, that's for the appearance. Next, we now go to um, liquefaction. Okay, so um, why is liquefaction important? Diba, recall, diba, na mentioned to now when the sperm or when the semen is ejaculated, it first coagulates. Alright? Now, we cannot perform uh, testing on a coagulated uh, semen sample. So, kailangan jud na to siyang ipaliquify. Or ato siya ipa, ipabalik o liquid. Okay? Alright. Now, for liquefaction, sa <laughs> mukha parida. Okay, all right. Hello, kasagang. Okay, again. So, um, first is, of course, um, fresh specimens, as mentioned, are clotted. And we cannot begin analysis on a clot clotted semen sample. So, kailangan tamo wait og liquefaction. And usually, the normal time for liquefaction is within 30 to 60 minutes. So, 30 to 1 hour after collection. Now, abnormal na siya if mo greater than 60 minutes. So, greater than 60 minutes, it could mean na kay prostatic deficiency. Why? Because diba, ang kailangan na enzymes na para sa liquefaction of your semen, ang prostate ang nagproduce. So, therefore, if na ay um, deficiency or na ay failure to liquefy within 60 minutes, then that could indicate na kay prostatic deficiency. Now, if two hours na wala pa, we now add something. We add dulbecos phosphate buffered saline or uh, proteolytic enzymes na yun, alpha, chymotrypsin, or bromelain. Okay, so kanis lang, kanis lang, pwede na itong i-add para mo liquefy na yun ang specimen. If after 2 hours, wala pa yun siya ni liquefy. Okay, so that can indicate na intense na yung prostatic uh, deficiency, na na yung mga enzymes na kulang. Alright, so we add, again, dulbecos, phosphate buffered saline, equal volume, or the proteolytic enzymes, alpha, chymotrypsin, or bromelain. Now, na ay ba mga specimens na pag, pag ejaculate or uh, niliquify na siya pero na po yung mga gelatinous bodies okay mura siya mga kumpul-kumpul pa rin na nabilin okay gelatinous bodies okay now this is considered normal daw according to um, Strasinger 
Okay, so wala na siya clinical significance. It's just normal. Okay, basta kanang niliquify na ang specimen niya na yung nabili ng mga gelatinous bodies or mga kumpul-kumpul, that's still considered normal daw according to Strasinger and it does not um, you know, indicate any clinical significance. Okay, alright, that's for liquefaction. Again, ang sa importance sa liquefaction, para makatesta. Because if dili siya mo liquefy, dili takatest, dili takaperform of sperm motility, sperm concentration, etc. Alright, okay. Now, we now go to volume and viscosity. Now, for volume, of course, the normal volume ni mo is about 2 to 5 ml. Okay. Now, may uban daw sa, well, sa ako na experience sa klase mi sa CM before, na ubang students daw, <laughs> na uban na nakakollect of more than 5 ml, maybe because intense ilang pag-abstinence. Alright, but the normal volume good is 2 to 5 ml. Now, how do we measure? Of course, we measure it using a graduated cylinder. Okay, at we transfer sa cylinder para yung measure ang volume. Now, again, if increase ang volume, prolonged abstinence. Okay? Now, if decrease ang volume, dira ang mas significant. It could mean na improper ang functioning sa imuhang semen producing, producing organs. Example, sa imuhang seminal fluid or sa imuhang yeah, seminal vesicles. Because again, recall that your seminal vesicles contribute the majority of uh, the fluid found sa imuhang semen, which is your seminal, uh, seminal fluid. Diba? So, uh, muna siya, um, uh, if ever decrease yung imuhang volume, then that could indicate na na problem sa imuhang seminal vesicles. And then aside from that, incomplete collection. So, wala ni mo nakuha, tanan, di ba? Kung saan ito, if ever man gani, uh, ang last portion, di ba? Ang, ay, last portion ba ito? Uh, yeah, ang last portion, i-decrease imuhang semen volume. If dili ni mo makuha ma ang last portion ba ito sa semen, nalimot ko. But yeah, muna siya important sa proper collection. Okay? Alright. Now, for viscosity, so, unsa siya ka unsa siya ka rupok, unsa siya ka sapok. Okay. Now, the normal vis viscosity is mo pour siya in droplets. So, when you use a pasture pipette, pag aspirate ni mo siya, mo pour siya in droplets. Okay? Now, uh, yeah. And dili siya mo appear na ay clumps or na ay string. Now, you're reporting, ayan guys, kanin guys, zero watery for gel like. Lumabas sa boards namin kanin duha as in zero watery for gel like, zero, zero watery for gel like. So, please take note as early as now ha, memorize uh, or like familiarize na. Zero watery, four gel like. Zero watery, four gel like. Inanara ko ang pag-memorize na. Zero watery, four gel like. Zero watery, four gel like. Okay? Alright, so that's how we describe viscosity. So kung zero, watery, two, four, gel, gel like. Mara gel, okay? Or pwedeng low, normal, or high. Pero ang nigawa sa mong boards kanin, zero watery, four gel like. As in, oh my gosh, baka lumabas sa boards niyo puhon. So please, please, uh, as early as now. Zero watery, four gel like. This is how we report usually viscosity. Zero to four. Okay, kung unsa yung meaning sa zero, watery, four, gel-like. As in, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, as in, I can remember it so well, good. Alright, so muni siya. Alright, or aside from that, pwede niyo siya i-describe as low, normal, or high. Okay, and increase mo viscosity if they form droplets longer than 2 cm. Ayan, longer than 2 cm. Okay, and this indicates usually incomplete imuhang liquefaction. Okay, alright, ayan. Okay. And, uh, yes, next we have oh yeah, viscosity, poor droplets, and pH and spec graph. Okay, for normal pH is about 7.2 to 8.0. Uh, yeah, normal pH indicates uh, na na-eye balance between the prostatic fluid and the seminal fluid uh, na release Okay, all right? Ayan. And uh, increased pH indicates infection or na-eye loss of CO2 because uh, na prolonged or more than one hour siya before na process, okay? Or na infection. Because again, increase pH, your bacteria uh, degrades uh, kato mga enzymes na adito, so of course, mo release siya og mas mo alkaline na ang pH noon. Alright? Okay. Ayan. And decreased pH meaning increased imuhang prostatic fluid. So, that's quite abnormal. Increase mo prostatic fluid. And recall that prostatic fluid is acidic. Alright? Na ejaculatory duct obstruction. So, that could mean na Dili na makaproduce og seminal dili maka sulod ang seminal fluid sa ejaculatory duct kay nay obstruction so para dili ma, ma neutralize or ma, 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 ma ano ang ma ano ang uh, acidic acidic pH sa imong prostatic fluid and poorly developed seminal vesicles still the same because your seminal fluid again contributes uh, more okay and this pH sa seminal fluid is quite alkaline okay all right so kung decrease pH that could indicate mo siya mga reasons why the pH could be decreased. Alright. And how do we perform or how do we detect the pH of the specimen? Pwede tamo gamit daw sa reagent strip sa ihi. 
and then color change or gapon or mga pH paper kato mga like litmus paper may nana all right okay ayan and last is specific gravity the normal spectrum of your semen is 1.0102 1.030 and it indirectly um, no it indirectly gives you a result of the sperm concentration because again if medyo gamay imo ang spectrum then that could mean na gamay ra pud ang sperm na naa dito and if taas ka ayo then maybe uh, daghan kayong sperm na adito. And if within normal, then that could indicate na normal ra ang number of sperm na naa. Okay? Alright. Okay, next. Alright, so what we're going to discuss now is um, the start of the calculations. Actually, duha naman ang calculations sa sperm, pero I still don't like it. <laughs> sa mga math. Uh, anyway, alright, so first is the sperm concentration. Alright, so uh, for sperm concentration, the normal is about greater than equal 20 million sperm cells per ml, all right? And um, the general formula is um, actually the same with your HEMA, okay? So for your HEMA, diba, because it uses your hemocytometer, so cells counted times the dilution factor over area times depth. Kanisha, guys, additional lang because um, nai uba na mga problems or nai uba na mga yeah, case studies ba na ang gihatag is UL, all right? So... And recall that 1 UL is equal to 1,000 ml. So, kung UL ang given, oh my gosh, kung uh, UL ang given, may ka na ko yung whiteboard marker, laban lang. So, kung UL ang given, so you convert that to ml, so you multiply it by 1,000 ml, di ba? Because again, 1 UL is equal to uh, 1,000 ml. Alright. So, um, ah, so mali, mali. 1,000 UL is equal to 1 ml pala. Okay. Alright. Okay, sige, tama. Alright, so uh, again, cells counted is average, okay? Uh, if greater than one counting area. So same ragya siya sa imuhang katong uh, quantitative. So you don't, uh, mag-average ka if doha ka counting chambers yung gamiton. But if usara, then you don't do the average. Okay na tong usa. Alright? Dilution factors about uh, is usually ang ginagamit natong na dilution is 1 is to 20. Okay? So ang dilution factor is 20. Area depends on the squares counted. So kung RBCs, ang area ana is point. Uh, oh my gosh, na limot ako. 0 0.04? 0 0.04? 0 0.02? 0 0.02? Oo, tapos, uh, depth is, excuse me, always 0.1 millimeter. Diba? Okay. Alright, so muna siya ang ato ang uh, sperm concentration. Okay. Alright. Now, um, we have another method known as the Weissman method. And usually, muna ito i-perform sa lab. So, ang procedure niya is, again, liquefaction. We mix the sample. Next, we aspirate using a WBC Thoma pipette. Because the WBC Thoma pipette has a much uh, larger na bore kaysa sa RBC. Diba? So, mas, maka, mas makasulod ang sperm cells. Alright? So, aspirate until the 0.5 mark. And then, uh, number three, kay aspirate the diluting fluid, usually chilled water or saline up to the 11 mark. So, following this, so, imong dilution ana is 1 is to 20. And the dilution factor is 20. And atong imix. Alright. Uh, discard the first three to four drops and charge the hemocytometer. Stand for about 2 to min 2 minutes or murag ang nasa stress is 3 to 5 minutes to immobilize sperm cells. Okay, so again, ang point sa imuhang diluting fluid, guys, is we want to immobilize the sperm cells. Para, of course, dili lisod i-count. Okay, if maglihok sila, dili ka-count o tarong. Okay, so ato siyang i-immobilize. Alright. Okay, and last, count the sperms in two large squares of the counting chamber. So, sa WBC na counting uh, na large squares. Okay, so ang ano mang good, if katong ganina na formula, Pwede siyang i-count sa either 5 ka squares katong sa RBC count, same sa RBC count, or for here is pwedeng duhara ka large squares sa uh, WBC count, di ba? So, again, so, di ba, ato i-draw ang inyuhang uh, HEMA cytometer, di ba? So, we have the center large square and then na ay lima kabuok na, di ba? So, for, ako rang ano ha? Rough, ano rin siya? Sorry. So, for, di ba, for RBC count, ang ato i-count is ang center large square kani, di ba? Alright? And ang center. So, for the sperm count, uh, sperm concentration, pwede kani, ato ang gamiton, kung RBCs, five ka, R, five ka RBC katong squares, or katong large square dere. Pwede yung duhara kabuok. Alright? Di ba, kay for WBC, upat man to kabuok, di ba? Na large square sa sides. But for wise man, pwede rin duha kabuok. Alright? Okay. Okay. Alright. Ayan. So, um, tama. Okay. And next, you compute the sperm count using the formula. Cells counted times 10 times 20 times 1,000 over 
2. So, gi shortcut na ni siya. 10 is katong depth, ang 20 ang dilution factor, and then ang um, 1000 kay, kay I think nigi convert na siya to UL ani. And then divided by 2. Basta follow this formula lang for Weissman method. Or if two large squares, ang shortcut is cells per ml is equal to cells counted times 100. Thousand. Okay, alright. And if 5 RBC squares ang imong gi uh, count or gigamit, naputay shortcut. Again, kung 5 RBC squares. Alright. Pwede rag uh, cells counted times 1 million. Okay? Ayan. So, shortcut na na siya. Alright? Okay. Ayan. Pero again, kung long method, follow lang sa formula sa um, katong uh, ginagamit na formula put for RBC count, for WBC count. Okay? That's for sperm uh, concentration. Okay. Alright. Now, how do we determine sperm count? Ang sperm count, guys, is easy ra. Manggi ka siya sperm concentration. Okay? So, di ba, recall your answer sa sperm concentration is cells per ml. Alright? So, for sperm count, what we do is, uh, para ma-determine ang sperm count, atong i-multiply ra ni siya by the total volume. So, example, you have 2 ml, so cells per ml times total volume of the semen. So, ang answer ni mo is cells per ejaculate. Okay. That's for sperm count. Okay? Sperm count, i-multiply na ang sperm concentration ni mo by the total volume. And, di ba, example, 2 ml, so makancel atong ml, you're left with cells per ejaculate ato ibutang. That's for sperm count. And atong normal value for sperm count, it's greater than equal to 40 million uh, per ejaculate. Remember, di ba, atong normal for sperm concentration is greater than equal to 20. Nya, ang normal na volume nato di ba, sa semen is mustard og 2 ml. So therefore, ang normal po sa sperm count is 2 ml times 20 ml, uh, 20 million for sperm concentration. Therefore, munang greater than equal to 40 million sperm cells per ejaculate. Ang normal for sperm count. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Okay, so please take note again, we also have what we call your round cells. And these round cells are your immature sperms or WBCs. And they are not included in the count. But, we can count them if we're going to because the presence of these um, cells or your round cells usually signify an, a significant or important uh, condition. So, kung taas WBCs, infection. And kung taas ng spermatids, it could mean an eye disruption sa spermatogenesis. Ayan. So, if greater than equal to 1 million leukocytes per ml, again, that indicates infection or inflammation. And if greater than equal to 1 million spermatids per, per ml, disruption of sperm cell production or spermatogenesis. Usually seen in mga toxic chemicals, viral infections, and genetic disorders. So, how do we count them? Still following the formula for the katong RBC count or katong hemocytometer na formula. Katong area times depth, di ba? Ay katong cells counted times division factor over area times depth. Okay? Alright. So, muna siya for sperm concentration. Okay. Next, we go now to sperm motility. Ayan. Now, for uh, sperm motility, it's important man good that, um, you know, bahalag medyo gamay doon yung concentration as long as your sperms are really like motil, that they are really, you know, uh, swimming well, <laughs> just keep swimming. So, maka fertilize yung ginaadaw siyang egg. Alright? Okay, that's for sperm motility. So, ayan, as you can see, sperm motility. Ang normal sperm motility nato is usually, we, ato na siyang i-grade uh, either by number 1, 2, 3, 4, or letters A, B, and D. Okay, alright. So, again, motility is critical for fertility because if na siya sa cervix, the sperm needs to, kailangan siya mo swim. Kailangan niya i-counter attack or counter yeah, I counter ang mga parang flow gikan sa cervix and all that. Para ma propel sila, padrong sa uterus, and then finally to the ovum. Okay. Again, should be assessed using, again, liquefied uh, semen after one, within one hour of specimen collection. Okay, so how do we do it? Using a cover slip method. So again, we do, uh, we, we place one drop lang of the seminal fluid on a pre warmed glass slide, and then butang a cover slip, and then you scan at least 20, 20 high power fields. Evaluate speed and direction. And lastly, we record a percentage of the sperm showing progressive, non-progressive, or non-motility. Or, pwede tamo grade using the WHO criteria. Okay. So, muna siya ang mga uh, grading. First is kani. Uh, alternative sperm uh, motility grading. Pwede progressive, non-progressive, and immotility. Progressive, kay move siya linearly. So, yung movement should kay linear. linear and um, 
non-progressive, gamove ang sperm, pero wala siya nag-progress, meaning wala siya nag-forward. Gamove ra siya, nag-staple ra siya, pero gamove ra siya on its place. Wala siya nag-progress. Okay, and immotility, wala joy movement. And usually, atong ginagamit is the WHO criteria, this one. Alright, so, 4 and uh, 3, 2 muna siya normal. O, di ba? Greater than 2 ang normal. Or A, B, A and B. So, ang 4 is rapid, pas-pas, niya straight, ang pag iyahang paglihok. 3 is slower than na ay some lateral. So, meaning na ay ni, ni kilid, na ay ni move sa kilid. Niya medyo slow. Okay? Alright. Number 2 is slow ang pag-forward. Pag niya noticeable pag yung naga na nag-turn-turn siya. Okay? Alright, ayan. And ang um, 1 is no forward progression and 0 wala joy movement. Okay, ran ako ipakita na video ani uh, late pohon pohon when uh, maybe ako na pong i-link sa ato ang ano soul, okay? Ang um, sperm motility. It's very it's very ano interesting. <laughs> it's nice to watch. Okay, all right. Ayan, sperm motility. Again, normal nimo is 4, 3 or 2, okay? Or A and B. Basta again, please take note on sa yang grading ha. Kung sa siya describe ang 4 is of course rapid straight line. Paspas yun. Ang 3 kay slower progression pero gamay ra ang mukilid or gamay ra siya mukilid. Mo straight ra gyapon siya pero naay gamay lang na mukilid. Okay? Ang 2 is slow then noticeable pag yun yahang pag liko. Okay? And then 1 is um, no forward progression meaning galihok ra siya on its place. Wala yun siya ni forward. And then 0 is wala joy movement at all. Okay? Alright. Next, after um concentration, motility, we now go to morphology. So, unsay iyahang appearance. Normal bang appearance ay mo sperm? Alright, so that's sperm morphology. Now, uh, the normal sperm morphology, we have, we base it on percentage. Alright, so if routine criteria dapat greater than 30% of the sperms kay normal. And if Kruger's, Kruger's strict, greater than 14%. Okay, now again, um, it's important that your sperm is morphologically um, correct or well. Because again, if dili siya chakto, then of course, it's incapable of penetration sa ovum. Dili siya kasulod sa ovum. So hence, wala fertilization na ma-occur. Alright? Um, also, its morphology is evaluated with respect to the head of the sperm, the mid-piece, and the tail. Alright? So muna siya itong i-look after karon. Okay? Alright. And again, abnormalities with the head usually poor ovum penetration, and if sa tail naman is in terms of motility niya. Of course, it's very uh, self-explanatory naman. If na problema sa head sa, um, sa sperm, then of course, dili siya ka-penetrate sa ovum or sa mong egg cell. And if na problema sa mid-piece and sa tail, then of course, na ay problema sa imuhang motility. Kaya dili siya ka-propel o tarong. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So we now go to the different um, normal sperm dimensions. Yes, lum actually, mugawas po ni sa boards, no? So nasa mga measurements, guys. So we'll start first with the head. Ayan. So this is the normal sperm. As you can see, oval ang head, no? And then the eye tail and then the mid piece. And then we also have what we call the acrosomal cap. Okay? Acrosomal cap. So kaning acrosomal cap, muna siya ang nai enzyme dira na muna ay mo uh, allow for the sperm to penetrate into the ovum. Alright? Okay, so we'll start first with the head. It should be oval. Unsa yang size 5 um long and 3 um wide. Okay, so yang head dapat is oval. 5 um long, dapat 5. And 3 um siya, 3 um wide. Okay? Alright. And ang acrosomal cap, di, di, di describe siya as approximately one half. Okay? Dapat one half of the nucleus. Alright? I one half of the head pala, sorry. One half of the head covering two-thirds of the nucleus. Ayan. Please take note of this dimension, guys. Lumalabas to sa boards. Alright? Again, one half of the head and then ang nucleus kay naadiri na tabunan o two-thirds. Okay? Alright. Muna siya acrosomal clap. Cap. One half of the head covering two-thirds of the nucleus. Alright. Next, we go na to the mid-piece. The mid-piece is about 7 uh, um long. Alright? 7 um long. And it is in the mid-piece na naadira ang mitochondria. And it's the thickest part because again, it's covered by mitochondrial sheath. Because again, kailangan siya o um, pag-propel. So therefore, ang mitochondria ang mo-support or mo-produce the energy. Alright? Para mo-swim siya, makaswim siya. So, asa makita ng mitochondria na asa mid-piece. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. And lastly, you have the tail which is about 4, uh, 45. 
micrometers long. Ayan. So please take note. Again, ang dimensions sa normal sperm ni mo. You have, again, the head, which is oval, 5 um long, 3 um wide. Okay, next. The acrosomal cap, again, kung asa itong enzyme na maka-help o penetrate to the ovum, it should be one half of the head covering two-thirds of the nucleus. Okay? Next, you have the neck piece or the mid-piece. Neck piece. Mid-piece. Alright? The thickest part, again, which contains mitochondrial sheath. Why? Because, again, this wood, the mitochondrial sheath or the mitochondria found in the mid-piece will now supply the energy para makaswim siya. And that is about 7 um, 7 micrometers long. And the tail, pilayahang size, 45 micrometers long. Please take note, guys, ha, of this, um, of this uh, measurements. Actually, mugawas ni sa boards. Lumalabas sa boards, promise. Okay. Alright, ayan. And we have the different um, nor abnormal morphology. And please take note, guys, the most uh, common cause there of infertility, okay? Most common cause of infertility in males is varicocele. Alright, I, I don't know if you're familiar. Varicocele is nai varicose vein sa imong testes. So nai vein na ni enlarge, okay? So therefore, what happens mang good? You know, um, blood is warm, di ba? So since dagha, ni enlarge man ang vein dito sa imong testes, alright, the pit, um, yeah, I think muna siya yung varicocele. I think muna siya, <laughs> muna siya, if I'm not mistaken sa ano ha, pero muna akong pagsabot. Varicocele na yung varicose vein sa imuhang, uh, I think sa scrotum or sa, basta mo, I think sa scrotum. So since the vein itself is enlarged, so therefore daghang blood na musulod, alright? Now blood is warm, right? And what happens is, kay init man ang blood, ma-affected noon ang pag-develop sa imuhang sperm. Because again, init kaayo and your sperm cells do not like na init kaayo. Okay? Kailangan ng body temperature. Okay, yeah. since na enlarge na vein, varicocele, so daghang blood na musulod, alright, then na normal, so mas init ang temperature, therefore, dili conducive for the development of the sperm, hence, ma-infertile noon, or maguba ang sperm uh, maturation, or especially the sperm morphology. Na ang varicocele, ang iyahang karakteristik na abnormal morphology sa sperm is tapered head. Ayan, please take note. Tapered head. What do you mean by tapered? Diba, ang normal is oval. Okay, oval. Ang tapered is ana. Okay? Mura siya ni, ni gamay, ni kuyos. Okay? So, oval, tapered is ni sharp noon siya. Alright? That's tapered head. Okay, I think wala sa picture. Pero mas naiklaro sa ano, sa inyong stress na picture. Okay? Tapered head. Muna siya ang karakteristik abnormal morphology sa imuhang varico, varicocele. So, when you say varicocele, na ay varicose veins sa imuhang scrotum, so, which could affect the morphology of your uh, sperm cells. Okay? Alright. Wait, I'll check the definition ba? Chapter ba? Ah, okay. Hardening of veins the eye that drain the testes, ang varicocele. So, para siyang yeah, varicose veins. Hardening of the veins. So, again, muna siya. So, ang blood is, na, daghang blood na masupply, so, warm ang environment, which, which your sperm cells do not like, so, ma-affected yung morphology. Dapat body temperature rag uh, always, 37. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Now, for the lab, how do we determine morphology? We use the right stain. So, what we do is, we make a smear. Alright? So, we place a drop of the seminal fluid, and then we make a smear. Mararag hima na smear. Okay? And then, we air dry, and then, follow the right stain. Mararag gamag uh, blood smear, actually. Methanol, and then, uh, eosin, and then, methylene blue. And then, we rinse with tap water, air dry, and then, examine under oil immersion. And we count at least... 200 ka sperms and we look at the percentage kung pila ang abnormal and pila ang normal. So, here is our formula. Normal sperm cells is, of course, pila ka normal yung una count over the total which is 200 times 100. So, that's the normal percent. Uh, the percentage na ito makuha. And di ba, ang normal na criteria is greater than 30% pero if Kruger strict, greater than 14% ang uh, normal. Alright? Okay, ayan. So, normal uh, sperm cells. Again, mura to. Percentage lang. Count the normal or abnormal divided by the total number of counted our, uh, sperm cells, which is 200 times 100. That's the percentage. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, again, that's the normal sperm cell. Okay. So, again, um, pwede mo gamit ag other stains. Pwede gem sa shore or Papa Nicolau. Alright. Papa Nicolau or your stain na ginagamit for pap smear. Okay. Papa Nicolau. Uh, ginagamit for pap smear. Yeah, actually, ang meaning sa pap is Papa Nicolau. Smear. Okay? Pap smear. Alright, you'll have that in your histotech, cytology. 
Okay, all right. So Papa Nicolau stain, ginagamit for pap smear, but we can also use it for um, for sperm morphology. Oh yeah. Okay. And Kruger strict criteria, dapat mo measure kasi head, neck, and tail size and acrosome size and evaluate also for the presence of vacuo. So strict yun siya kay mas dagana siyang requirements. <laughs> okay, all right. And here are some pictures of at atong stain. Ayan. So normal sperm, as you can see, claro jud yung oval. And then acrosomal. Kani murag baga na na stain diri guys. Muna siyang acrosomal cap. Okay? And then neck piece, a mid piece, and then a tail. Okay? Alright. That's for sperm morphology. Okay. Alright. And next we have what we call the sperm vitality or viability. When you say vitality or viability, um, unsa siya kadugay before siya mamatay. So pila siya ka dapat, uh, like how, like, how viable it is. Like, unsa siya kadugay before siya mamatay. Like, how long is, are your sperms able to live, di ba? Alright, ayan. So, normal sperm vitality is dapat greater than 50% within one hour. And, um, unsa na? You will suspect na decrease ang sperm vitality, vitality ni mo when you tested your semen and you have results that are normal yung sperm concentration pero na ay decreased motility. Okay, so it means, mga good, decrease ang motility, dili kayo siya na na Dili siya kalahutay good for a long time there. Dili siya kalahutay for a long time. Munang decrease yung motility. Okay? Kaya dapat within one hour, dapat 50% pagyod of your sperm na naadit to, alive pa. Okay? That's the point of sperm vitality or viability. Okay? So when do we suspect if not a decreased sperm vitality? If the specimen has normal rate sperm concentration, okay, daghan ra. Pero, gamay iyahang motility or decrease yung motility. It means na dili siya kalahutay after a long period of time. So, Sa, sa vagina plang daan, dili na siya ka-swim dayon. After mga pila na kami nis, mamatay na siya dayon. Alright? So, very weak. Imuhang mga weak, weak, imuhang ano, imuhang uh, sperm cells. Okay. Now, how do we determine this? We use the Bloom's method. So, for Bloom's method, uh, seminal fluid pa rin, and then a drop lang, and then after you add two drops of 3% eosin, two times the amount of the seminal fluid, and then we add four drops of negrosin and mix, and then smear na pod, and then fix with heat, and then examine under OIF. All right. And then still the same, we count at least 200 sperm cells and get the percentage of live sperm cells. So still the same number of uh, live sperm cells counted over the total, which is 200 times 100. And that is the percentage of viable sperm cells. And what's the normal result? Greater than 50% within one hour. Okay. Ayan. So, for dead or non-viable, it will take up the stain, uh, eosin, so it will appear red. And for live or viable stain, it will, uh, for live or viable sperm, it will not take up the stain. So, they will be unstained against the black background. So, ang negrosin ang, back, ang black background. And then, ang eosin ang either it take up or it dili it take up. So, kung dead mo hang sperm cells, makita ni mo na red iyahang head. Okay? Pero if alive ra siya, wala ra siya color. Like, Colorless. Okay, dili niya i-take up ang eosin. Okay, so here is an example. Alright. The presence of a large proportion of vital but immobile cells may indicate a defective flagellum. So, uh, yeah, that would indicate na guba mo flagellum. Munang decrease po niya ang motility. Whereas, if taas ang emotil, non-viable cells pag yun, it means na guba mo hang, there's something wrong with your epididymis. Remember that in the epididymis, dito siya mo mature, dito pa dun siya mo magka-flagellum. So again, if taas siya mo hang viable cells pero gamay mo motility, it means na kay problema sa flagella. Pero if high number ang emotil pag yun and non-viable, so it could mean an adjoint problema sa epididymis. Because this is the, epididymis is the area where sperm cells mature and where they develop your flagella. Okay, so here's an example of a picture. So, um, but if claro ra, kanin mga red, muna siya ang dead, and kanin mga white, mura ang alive. Okay, so ato na siyang i-count, and then divide by 200 times 100. Muna siyang percent viable cells. Okay, alright. 